Hi, Lynn. Hi, Tony. I'm so glad you could join us. Thank you for giving some time today to explain a bit about yourself and your business. I am so pleased to be here. Always a pleasure to have a, have a chat about things. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I know that there's a story behind your name of your business, Golden Buddha Havening and Hypnotherapy. I think it'd be great just to hear a little bit about that story, which I think goes back to the 1950s. It does. It does. I, I learned this about this wonderful story during my hypnotherapy training. Um, back, I think it was in 1955, a monastery was doing some work. And so they had a group of monks relocate this huge Buddha. And in order to do that, they had to tie it up with ropes and, and lift it off its pedestal. And as they were lifting it, the ropes broke and it crashed to the ground. And when it crashed to the ground they there was a big flurry and everyone was running around and and one of the monks noticed that where some of the stucco had chipped away he could see a golden light shining through there and mm. so they they got busy and they they chipped away all this plaster coating it had bits of glass in it and they chipped it all away and underneath this plaster coating they discovered a solid gold gold buddha and that's why it weighed so much gosh wow yeah that's quite incredible actually and that had been done many years before i'm guessing it, it was apparently a couple of hundred years prior to that time um this they were under attack and in order to disguise the true value the worth of this lovely golden buddha they decided to cover it with stucco and bits of glass in, in kind of in in the stucco to disguise it and for all those years it secret laid hidden away and no one really knew its true worth that's that's quite something isn't it, it really yeah, is it really what a discovery is. i know yeah <laughs> I'm just imagining what was going through the mind of the first monk to catch a glimpse of this <laughs> i imagine yeah. that they just couldn't even possibly begin to figure out what had happened how that got there <laughs> what's some <Yeah>. treasure <laughs> yeah for sure and uh i i do know that this kind of represents your own journey as well it really spoke to you because of that it really did it reminded me of the type of work that i do and have done myself and i'm a, a sculptor as well as the other modalities that i practice and so Throughout the years, uh, I studied different modalities, coaching and, and NLP and EFT and matrix re-imprinting and hypnotherapy and havening. And I integrate all of those into sessions. And so the work that I do is very sculptural in that way. And um, so back in about 2005, I was going through a difficult time in my life and it was it was one of those times where you need to just take a little time out to find yourself again and, and I was doing just that and so I had some great tools to work with on on top of my sculpting and I had decided that I would take some time and and sculpt this series uh, representing peace and so there was five pieces and they were all Buddhas in their own way and one of these pieces ended up being a sleeping monk, which I called Jikan. And he really represented my peaceful self. I, I resonated completely when, when he was completed, I felt like I had completed. Mm. Yeah. And so it also, at the same time, a friend had lent me a book to read, The Art of Happiness by the Dalai Lama and was a beautiful read. I read it, I think, three times that summer <laughs> and incorporated the wisdom from that as well. And so once I had completed all of the pieces, I brought them to the gallery. I had a show. And so I delivered the pieces to the gallery. And when I got home, there was a message waiting for me. And it was the gallery asking me to come back. And I thought, what the heck? Why do I have to go back to the gallery? I was just there. You know, did I forget something or... So 
as I am walking up to the gallery through the window, I can see red dots on each of my sculptures, which a red dot means it's sold. Oh. <laughs> and so I'm like, what the heck? They all sold already? And wow. uh, yeah, so I, I, I had the opportunity to deliver the pieces to the person that bought them. And within a couple of weeks, uh, I had an invitation to, to go to Tucson, Arizona with a, with a small group of people who had a private audience with the Dalai Lama. No way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it was amazing how through the work I did and through reading The Art of Happiness, which I had never read before and the Dalai Lama wasn't on my mind prior to that. However, by connecting with my calm center and in reading that book, somehow that connected me with, with uh, the energy that, that delivered me to meet the Dalai Lama in person and to hold his hand. And I, I got to sculpt a, a small kneeling monk and, and give it to him. And it was so oh. wonderful to just listen to him giggle when I gave it to him. And he's like, it's so heavy. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Magic moments. I know, I know. And I would have never thought how that summer started out, out that it would have, you know, ended in that way. Gosh, yeah. that, is, that is really something. There's so much in there I want to unpick. I think we need a, a few hours to speak <laughs> some more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, such a blessing. And I know uh, I've seen... Uh, Jikan. I've seen photos of Jikan and I know that he's been placed in areas where others have got to experience him. Yeah. Um, what, what, what does he remind them of or what does, how does he speak to them when they experience him? I think that when people are around Jikan or when they, when they see him, they, it, he reminds them of their calm center I can just see a smile come on their face and oftentimes someone will sit right next to them or lean up against them. And yeah, I think it's, it really helps as a reminder to people that they have that inside of them, that calm center and uh, to allow themselves the time to just go there, to take a moment, even if it's just a moment to go there to that calm place inside of them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Almost whatever's going on on the outside, uh, there's that wonderful representation of, of calm and peace. Yeah, that's at our, at our core. We, we, it's always with us. It gets covered up with layers, not unlike the stone that I had to reveal Jikan. He was inside of there, but underneath a 200-pound block of stone, there he was. Yeah, yeah he revealed himself. <laughs> he did, he did. Oh, yeah goodness. yeah and so this really represents um some of the work that you do uh when you're not sculpting it does it does when i when i work with people to help them rediscover their golden buddha um so i i use all the different modalities that i've trained in and they are like my sculpting tools and so i'm really just the guide and I help them, um, the work is very sculptural in, in nature, and I, I simply help them to chip away the layers that they might have put on over the years to protect themselves. And um, it's a very nurturing, gentle, restorative kind of work. Uh, yeah, mm. and, and very intuitive. Mm. And it sounds, sounds like it's just a different kind of sculpting. You're... you're different tools but uh really you're doing that same reveal of the magic very much so and and that essence the essence of who we are it's always there and so if you can just get a glimpse of it and it's it's then you just begin to take away the layers and and that essence is is our golden buddha it's our peaceful center that where we can make you know so many great decisions from Oh, I love it. <laughs> I know, I know I've, I just get a, a beautiful, calm feeling even just seeing Jikan. So uh, if that's a representation uh, of what you do with, with, with people, wow, <laughs> that's going to be good. That's going to be really good. Mm. And uh, 
are there particular kinds of people? I'm imagining, as you described it, that there are so many people who could benefit. Are there particular people you think would benefit most? Well, I think anyone that is feeling, you know, how we often say, ah, oh, I just don't feel like myself. Well, mm. that, that's a good starting point. If you don't feel like yourself, that, you know, then likely it's because there's a reason that you're carrying around something that, that you maybe needs to be processed or somehow um, mm. integrated or, or whatever. And so if you're feeling overwhelmed or anxious or feeling not like yourself or like your head is too busy, you're packing around too many things to do, uh, mm. all those sorts of things. Or if you're just feeling lost, maybe... Maybe you just can't find your direction. You, you had it, but somehow you got lost mm. along the way. And, and so by working with Golden Buddha Havening Hypnotherapy and the other modalities, we're able to tap into the subconscious mind, and to, which is our creative mind, and to discover things that we might not otherwise come up with. And so mm. we, have, we have all the answers for our challenges, our problems in, already with us, where it's just revealing them. And, and sometimes we're packing around too much stuff. We can't see clearly. And so when we're able to just put some of that down, we can see the way. Yeah. Wow. And I'm imagining it's a very, each, each person, each client who works with you, I imagine it ends up being a very unique journey with you and your creativity and, and them and their wisdom that's being unlocked. Very much so. Yeah, very much so. They may start off this coming to see me for one thing and, and we end somewhere else completely because it's, it's very intuitive and, and really and truly they know where they want to go, but they just don't know how to put it in words. And so we mm. just start, start the process, not unlike sculpting. Just start the process and it will reveal itself. Whatever needs to be revealed will be revealed. And there's no, no having to stress about what am I going to say? You know, I don't even know what's wrong. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We'll find it. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a, a wonderful way to, to wrap up, Lynn. It sounds like a lot of people could really benefit hugely with working with you. Um, and I guess they can just really connect with you more by contacting you through your website. That would be wonderful. Yeah, I, I encourage and welcome any connections and I'd love to have a conversation with whoever would like to. Yeah. Great. Well, again, thank you, Lynn. And uh, I wish you all the very best with this wonderful work you're doing. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you. Always a pleasure to, to have a conversation and to see your smiling face. Well, bye for now. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye.